Shop Redcon1.com this Black Friday and enjoy over $260 in free product and apparel. With only a $50 purchase, you'll receive this custom premium Redcon 1 leather weightlifting belt. This limited edition 15-serving Total War pre-workout Black Ops edition cherry bomb flavor. We'll even throw in this Black Friday stealth t-shirt and our official collector's edition shaker. That $260 value is absolutely free this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Save an additional 33% off the entire site. Visit Redcon1.com now to start saving. Do you have like maybe a most memorable Ronnie Coleman story you can tell me? Um, I just know, I've known Ronnie for like since back in 1990. So we've been uh, friends even, you know, before we were on, on the, uh, on tour together and competing in multiple competitions together. He, uh, he was placing, you know, in the back of the pack a lot of the time. So, he was more like, uh, I just know Ronnie from when he was really a quiet person. And uh, he was, uh, I remember mean, one time we were sitting in the back of the bus, uh, touring throughout Europe. And uh, I guess we went to go and find, go around town, looking for, to exchange money and stuff like that. And he was just like, so reserved and so like unassuming, but as, as big as he was, it was still like, it was just, kind of funny to see that he was just so, so quiet. So like, and so he just, instead of just asking us to, to come with us, he just walked like five, five yards behind us and just followed us where we were going. And uh, he was, it was cool because uh, then when he started to get a little, get bigger and better and bigger and better, uh, you know, at first his, uh, his legs were a little bit down from his upper body. So when all that started to grow and, catch up that was with looming on up to him uh, taking a title and it was just kind of funny to see him transition from from that point to that point to being Mr. Olympia. Now when you first met him like you mentioned he wasn't as impressive you know physically as he became much later in his career. Right. Um, did you see that potential in him, in him when, you, when you first got a chance to know him? He just uh, you know like I said he was he was really weak on the lower half so he was, he used to uh, try to pose to hide his weaknesses and everything. But then, uh, back to 96, 97, on into 98, that's when he, you know, came into his own. What was, what is generally like the, the life of a bodybuilder, this lifestyle back then in the 90s? You guys used to travel together, right? Different tours. How, how, did, how was that process? Yeah, um, we had, the, we had like, at least after the Mr. Olympia or the Arnold Classic, we had multiple shows throughout uh, Europe. And during that time, that was, uh, you know, we'd get a lot closer. Sometimes we had to roommate with each other or we're definitely next door to each other uh, in one section of the hotel. So we'd get into, you know, even, uh, even up to we, we were in, where were we in? Uh, New Zealand. And this is after we've been, you know, he's been, he was Mr. Olympia already, but, um, after the competition, we celebrated together, and then we just start counting how many corks, how many bottle corks we was gonna have, and we, had, we was up to like two handfuls of bottle corks. Like they didn't have <laughs> no more champagne. They, we was going into the sh cheap stuff, and then we made our way to a nightclub and started dancing in the nightclub all night. And I just remember they, him and I forgot who else we were at, with uh, had me uh, arm in arm, take me to my room, and he just opened the door and just threw me in the room and took off. That was, uh, that was pretty memorable. Now, I think it was the year of 97, the year prior to that, Dorian Yates won his last Olympia and retired. Right. And then it was up to up for grabs, the title of Mr. Olympia. Right. Which was the title. Um, from, what my, from my understanding is, he wasn't the top choice to win, right? Well, he, he did start coming on stronger. Um, he just started getting help with Chad Nichols and he just started to, uh, to gain momentum on, on everyone because he didn't beat any of us up until that point. You beat him numerous times. Yeah, yeah. So each Olympia or so, uh, the pro Ironman, Knight of Champions, stuff like that, 
he wasn't uh, he wasn't winning. I think he just caught up to Flex at one of those shows, maybe the Night of Champions. I'm not if I'm not mistaken. And uh, but Flex was always a, the heir apparent to the title uh, behind uh, uh, Dorian because he managed to go from getting his pro card to to being uh, you know the top in Mr. Olympia all in the same year. You know, it was just that was in '93. So from that time, it was always de he was always destined to be the next guy. And uh, he, uh, you know, for him to lose that show, actually, I mean, he was he was way off, man. He was way off for that competition. Flex. Yeah, Flex was. And for him, and Ronnie was pretty hungry because, as you know, he's, he was 17th in Olympia multiple times, or you know, not making a grade. So. Uh, he, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was shows, it was a flex show to, 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 to lose or to win. It was up to flex and he just kind of bombed out. And, uh, you know, I, everyone says, you know, you know, even him, he was saying he didn't really, I don't think he wanted that type of success. That was a lot to, to take in, you know, and, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people are afraid of that type of success. Now, I spoke to Fle I spoke to uh, Brian, you know, when we were filming with him a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me that he was about to lose hope of placing high at Olympia. He was actually close to giving up at some point. Um, did you ever see him frustrated when he was not placing well? Did you ever see him like kind of like losing hope? I didn't see him losing hope. Um, I didn't see that part, but I seen that he kept trying. Maybe he didn't think that he would ever get there because he was actually you know, I probably would have not competed that many times if I would have placed that low that many times. So I got to give it to him to persevere, you know, through all of that, because that's that's tough. You know, when you're not making a cut. Because my, my first competition at Mr. Olympia, I was sixth place the first couple of years. And so I went I stayed in that little area until I made the jump to the top three. But I don't think I could have kept going if I was that. I don't know. I don't think so.